Hello and welcome to our video on the single syringe method of platelet-rich plasma preparation. We're going to show you how to make PRP with a lab centrifuge and common medical supplies easily obtained for the medical office or clinic. All the equipment and supplies that we mention are generic and we have no financial interest in any suppliers or manufacturers. You will need several items of equipment. First, a pair of garden shears or diagonal cutter pliers with which to trim the plungers and flanges of syringes. Second, a tourniquet. And third, a lab centrifuge capable of three to 4,000 revolutions per minute with large swing buckets. You will need an antiseptic to clean the patient's skin before venipuncture. Other supplies include several sizes of syringes, sterile syringe caps, sterile lure lock adapters, standard ACDA or sodium citrate solution, and a hypodermic needle for blood drawing, such as a 21 gauge butterfly needle. Before venipuncture, draw up 1.5 ml of ACDA or sodium citrate into a sterile 20 ml syringe. Then attach your blood draw needle, apply the tourniquet, prep the patient and proceed with venipuncture. Fill the syringe with 16.5 ml of blood so that the total volume is 18 ml. Mix the blood and anticoagulant well by inverting a number of times. Cap the syringe with a sterile syringe cap. Place the syringe into the centrifuge buckets with the cap facing upwards towards the top of the centrifuge. In order for the syringe to fit flat against the bottom of the bucket, you'll have to cut off the shaft of the syringe plunger flush with the bottom of the barrel of the syringe. Garden shears, diagonal cutters or even tin snips will work for this. Depending on the size of your syringes and of your centrifuge buckets, you may have to cut off the flanges of the syringe as well. You may wish to keep the syringe from moving around in the bucket during centrifugation by placing it in a conical tube inside the bucket or by wrapping the barrel in a small piece of bu bubble wrap or something similar before placing it into the bucket. If you're spinning only one syringe, you'll need to create a balancing syringe and fill it with 18 mils of water and place it into the centrifuge opposite the syringe with the blood. Set the centrifuge for 1000 G and 10 minutes. Your centrifuge may have the option to set it in G's, relative centrifugal force or RCF, but this will be inaccurate for our purposes because RCF depends on the radius from the center of the rotor to the target layer of the sample. The default radius for centrifuge manufacturers is the distance from the bottom of the centrifuge buckets. After centrifugation, the sample will have separated into two visible layers, plasma and red blood cells. Most of the plasma layer is platelet-poor plasma, so we need to remove that before we can get to the platelet-rich plasma. Take the PRP syringe gently from the centrifuge and keeping it upright with the cap upwards, remove the syringe cap and attach the Lua lock adapter. Then attach a sterile 10 ml syringe to the top of the adapter. Using the plunger on the 10 ml syringe and keeping a close eye on the plasma level in the bottom 20 ml syringe, withdraw plasma until 1 ml of plasma is left in the bottom syringe. Still keeping the 20 ml syringe upright, remove the 10 ml syringe with the platelet poor plasma. You may discard it or keep it for other uses. Now attach a sterile 3 ml syringe to the top of the adapter. Slowly withdraw the rest of the plasma until you can just see the red appearing above the adapter in the tip of the 3 ml syringe. Then carefully withdraw 0.5 ml more of the red layer. So I'm stopping and now we're going to pull okay. up. Yep. We're going to go to 0.5 on here. Good. One, two, three, four, five. Mm -hmm. Go. Detach the 3 mil syringe 
and put a sterile syringe cap on it. Mix well. If you have a vortex mixer, you can mix it for 5 to 10 seconds at about 3 quarters of maximum speed, which is 2500 RPM. If not, just mix well by hand or put in a test tube rocker for 15 to 20 minutes. Now your PRP is ready. You can administer it immediately. Cool it and administer it, or activate it and administer it. As of this recording in September 2019, nobody knows the optimal dose of PRP for anything. Few dose response studies have been published. However, we know from tissue culture studies, like the one shown here, that there is a dose response curve. We will be talking more about PRP dosage calculations in an upcoming video. A few more words about setting your centrifuge. Most test tube centrifuges are calibrated in RPM, revolutions per minute. Since relative centrifugal force is specified in Gs, you will have to convert Gs to RPM in order to set the centrifuge. Here's the formula. Conversion calculators are available on a number of websites, or you can use our app, PRP Calc. For details, please watch our PRP centrifugation video. We tested a number of samples using this method and found the PRP produced to have the properties listed here. You should periodically test your PRP too, to make sure you're getting what you think you are. PRP preparation by this method using standard medical supplies and a lab centrifuge is quick, easy to learn and consistently gives good results. It does not require a laboratory hood or any proprietary materials. Using high volume syringes, it can be used to prepare large amounts of PRP. However, it requires one relatively expensive piece of equipment a laboratory centrifuge with buckets large enough to fit syringes. These centrifuges usually cost in the range of $1,000 to $1,500 in North America. This method will make leukocyte-rich PRP, best used for soft tissue injections. We have other syringe methods for producing large and small volumes of leukocyte-poor PRP for large or small joint injections. Thanks for watching, we hope you enjoyed the video.